Got a recording. So, welcome everybody to the J Browse Two session. Scott, do you want me to just start with the introduction, or actually, but uh, before you do, um, I just wanted to tell everybody that in the chat I put uh, links to the download page for the desktop, the J Browse Two desktop application. If you want to follow along, downloading that and installing while Rob is talking, I think is a perfectly acceptable and not rude thing to do. Uh, I also added a link to the tutorial page so that if you do want to follow along, you're going to want to open up that as well because there will be cutting and pasting of URLs and things like that. Um, ah, I was wondering about whether or not those would be visible. So I will repost all those right now. And then um, uh, first I'll introduce Rob and then I'll post, uh, I'll post, post all those URLs. So Rob is, uh, I've been working with him for many, many years. He's the lead developer of JBrowse 2, um, of uh, a really great team of developers. So he's gonna talk a little bit about what, what, what we've done with JBrowse 2, and uh, he's gonna take 15 or 20 minutes to do that. And then I will do a, uh, a JBrowse 2 uh, tutorial that'll be interactive. We'll do, a, we'll do use, the, use the desktop application and we'll talk about why we have one of those and what's great about it. And uh, so, yeah, so I will, uh, I'll hand it over to Rob. I'll mute myself and stop my video and uh, off we go. Take cool. it away, Rob. Thanks, Scott. Um, wow, there are 26 people in here. Uh, welcome everybody to the JBrowse 2 workshop. Um, gonna give you a little introduction about JBrowse 2. I'm Rob Buells, as he said, the development lead of the JBrowse 2 team. So, I'll tell you a little bit about what we're going to be learning about today, the product and why we made it. So why do we make JBrowse 2? Well, we uh, saw that JBrowse 1 just wasn't cutting it anymore for the more complicated data that people are increasingly having. Um, things like uh, long range interactions between things, trying to understand structural variants, um, needing to understand uh, how different genomes compare to each other. Uh, just um, JBrowse 1 just is, is a linear view and you know you can switch chromosomes and you can you can plug you can write a lot of plugins for it and everything, but it's hard. it's, it's just um, it's just a linear view and, and we wanted more. Um, and we had a grant to do more. So basically the, uh, the vision that we came to uh, was we wanted to expand on JBrowse 1 um, by just making all of the things that JBrowse 1 had, uh, but rewriting them in newer technologies and doing more. Um, so one of the biggest things was we, we realized that you need to have multiple different views of the same data open at the same time in order to be able to start uh, wrapping your head around some of these more complicated things. Um, and then you can really benefit from, from having multiple views open um, and showing things in, in different contexts. Um, and we wanted to keep a lot of the strengths of JBrowse 1, um, which are really, really configurable uh, settings that you, can, that you can use for your deployments. Um, and we wanted to add a lot more to the configuration. Uh, graphical configuration was a big thing that we, you know, saw people needing uh, in different contexts. We, we wanted to have uh, gra graphical configuration built in from the ground up, um, and we wanted things to be even more pluggable than JBrowse 1. We had a lot of great JBrowse 1 plugins, but, you know, I, I sort of thought, you know, if we, can, if we can make a thing that has multiple views, we can make something that supports plugging all of those views and third party people were writing writing views that can integrate with other ones and I think we've we've more or less achieved a system that can do that. Um, it's still early days. We don't have a whole lot of uh, third party plugins yet, but uh, the the platform is there and my hope is that we're going to be seeing a lot more things coming down the pike. Um, one of the nice things about us rewriting everything in newer web technologies is we can use the same code base to produce um, a number of different products that are, are from the same underlying code, but run in different contexts. So we, 
JBrowse one only ran on the web. You know, you'd have to install it and have a web server and serve it to people over the web. Um, but using these more modern technologies, we can actually use the same code to create a, a web a web view of things, and it can also run on the desktop uh, using a, a newer technology that's newer than JBrowse one uh, called Electron. Uh, a lot of things already run on Electron. It's a very mature technology at this point. Um, I mean, JBrowse one was the it was started in 2007, so that was uh, it's hard to believe, but 2007 was actually, gosh, that was a lot of years ago now. Um, and Scott and I have been working together for a lot of years. Boy, how the years go by. Anyway, uh, we can also produce embedded components that other developers can use, which is a really, really cool thing. Uh, and I'm not going to go too much into detail in this introduction because you know the primary audience, at least I think, for this talk isn't really developers, uh, more users, but you know, feel free to ask questions about the more technical stuff later as we go on. Uh, as I mentioned, there are three main sort of categories of products that JBrowse2 uh, is producing now. There's the web, uh, the big web JBrowse2. Uh, there's JBrowse Desktop, which I believe is what we're gonna be using today during the tutorial. Um, it's JBrowse Web and JBrowse Desktop, they run from pretty much the same code base. Uh, they're just uh, different packagings of, of the, same, the same code. Uh, and then the JBrowse Embedded products, which allow you to take different JBrowse views or um, other pieces of JBrowse and, and use them in your own apps. Um, there have already been a couple of integrations using those. Um, for example, uh, there's, a, there's a great R integration that uh, allows you to use um, JBrowse, uh, the JBrowse 2 Linear Genome View in an R, um, R Shiny app and other R apps as well. I'm not that familiar with R, but that was made by Elliot Hirschberg on the team. Um, and we also have some pretty cool Python and Jupyter integrations. So you can use a JBrowse 2 Linear Genome View and soon a Circular Genome View as well. Where that's not released yet, but you can use a JBrowse 2 Linear Genome View in your Jupyter notebooks now, which is pretty cool. At least I think it's pretty cool. So JBrowse 2. This is what it may the main like UI of a JBrowse 2 looks like. There are three main components here. Can people see my mouse cursor? Uh I'm not really, or do I have to use like a pointer? I I'm pretty sure I can see it. Move it again. Okay. Can you see my mouse cursor? Yes. Yeah. It is pretty tiny though. Uh, it is tiny. Uh, well, I'll try to like move it a lot. Um so the main JBrowse, uh, this is what the web and the desktop products both look like. They both have the same layout. There's a menu bar at the top for drop-down menus that plugins can add things to if you want. Um, there's the, we call this sort of the drawer on the right uh, where you have things like the details of what you're looking at or sometimes configuration pops up here or um, just other auxiliary things. And then this largest piece of the UI here is what we call uh, the view stack. The team calls it the view stack. It's a stack of multiple views um, that are, uh, you can scroll up and down. You can just have just multiple different views of, of different things. And you can mix and match whatever views make sense uh, for you to be seeing. They're tiled. They don't like sit on top of each other. It's not like a windowing system. They're, they're, it's a stack of views and you can mix and match what views you want depending on what you're doing. So some of the different views that are available in JBrowse 2, I'm just gonna go through these very quickly. Um, there's the linear view, which looks a lot like JBrowse 1. Um, there are a lot of different kinds of tracks that are available in the linear view, of course. And of course, plugins can add uh, new tracks uh, and new, new display types and menus and everything. Um, here are a few of the different display types uh, or track types that are available. Uh, there's the SV inspector, which is an interesting use case of, there are actually two different views encapsulated in another top level view. So this basically is uh, a spreadsheet married to a circular view that lets you open um, VCF files, um, or there are, I think it supports some other um, variant call uh, formats as well, and let you uh, filter and look at um, breakpoints and, and variants uh, and their 
um, locations will be shown on the circular uh, thing in the right. And as you filter them, the, the circular view um, filters down as well. So that's the SV inspector, structural variant inspector. Uh, we also have a dot plot view, um, which was made by Colin. It's really, really, I love this view. Um, we have the breakpoint split view that lets you look at two different uh, sides of like a VCF breakpoint and show them uh, their, their genomic context, one above the other, uh, with uh, connecting lines showing um, where a feature spans this breakpoint. So like here we have a human chromosome one and human chromosome five, and there's breakpoints that connect these two things. And we're trying to connect the, um, the alignment reads that go, uh, that span these two, two sides of the breakpoint. That was made by Colin as well. Uh, we also got Synteny, the, the block-based Synteny uh, that integrates with the dot plot view. I think we'll probably see that later in the demo. Uh, so yeah, this is, this is a, a block-based Synteny view though, similar to other Synteny views um, you might've seen. You, you scroll one on the bottom and the, the rectangles will, or the polygons will move showing the, the relationships between the two different um, Synteny genomes. Um, you can also compare long reads using some of these same views. Uh, we can use, like, for example, you can use the dot plot in a way that will compare uh, a long read to the reference. Uh, and you can also compare a long read to the reference with a, a syntenic block kind of view. Um, that, I mean, that's not syntony, obviously, but it's, you know, it's, we kind of call that a syntony view just because that's what it's historically been used for. It, but, it's, you know, two genomes and polygons that connect them to show the relationships. Uh, and as I said before, JBrowse is extremely customizable. This is kind of the, the slide. This has a lot of text on here, but this is basically the, the different ways that you can customize JBrowse to. Uh, you can, you know, the simplest ways is you can just configure it using the, the graphical user interface, but there's also a command line interface that you can use to, to configure it if you're setting up jbrowse on the web in some kind of build pipeline or command line script or something. You can put uh, code expressions in the configuration. Now jbrowse 1 in the configuration, you some of you might remember jbrowse 1 had JavaScript callbacks in the configuration. We decided to do something different, um, mostly for security reasons. Uh, and the configuration callback format in jbrowse 2 is a, a format called Jexel, which is a Basically, it's a subset of JavaScript that as that doesn't have as many security implement implications. But you can you can write pretty much most of the things that people used um, JBrowse one callbacks for. You can write in Jexel as well. Do you agree, Scott? You've written probably more Jexel than anybody here at this point. Is that true? Boy, I hope that's not true. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. I, everything I've wanted to do, I've been able to do. But I. Um, I've mostly been playing. I haven't done, you know, implementation and like I really mean it yet. Well, so anyway. I'll, I'll be I'll, I'll probably come back and, and bug you and the rest of your team uh, when there are things that I want to do that are really complicated. That's great. But because we're always but, but then I will document it so that everybody can do it. <laughs> we do not get enough in our like the pandemic has been a large portion of the JBrowse two development has been during the pandemic, so we're all going nuts like not having enough interaction with i'm so i'm so pleased to be here by the way that that uh to have 26 people in the room with, with us talking about jbrowse too it's just so nice um anyway so you can also yeah going going further down the rabbit hole of the different ways that you can configure jbrowse too uh if you can't do what you want with jexel expressions your configuration you can write a little plug-in that might just add to a, a little extension point in, that are sprinkled throughout the JBrowse code base. Like if you wanted to add a menu item, you could you could do a, a little plugin like that. Uh, or if you want to make a new view, you can write a bigger plugin using our, our plugin template uh, and use TypeScript to make a whole new view or new data adapters or or any other just about any other like what's called a pluggable element in JBrowse too nearly everything in JBrowse 2 is some kind of pluggable element. Or you can even write some plugin that runs uh, things like shell commands or stuff that would that would be in the desktop app. Um, obviously, you know, there are security implications to that. So if you're running the desktop app, make sure that the plugins you run are from people that you trust. 
um, JBrowse 2 plugins. One of the coolest things about JBrowse 2 plugins is that we have a plugin store. Um, and in the UI, in the JBrowse UI, you can install plugins with just one click. You just hit, you know, it's a, it's a widget on the right side and you can just hit install and it will install the plugin in your JBrowse and start running it. You know, if you want Collins, multiple sequence alignment view plugin, you just hit install and suddenly you have available a multiple sequence alignment view. Uh, there are quite a few interesting plugins available in the plugin store. There's a little link in the slide, but you can easily see the plugin store on jbrowse.org as well. Um, and this is what the view on jbrowse.org looks like. I think there are something, something like 10 plugins in the plugin store right now. Uh, but there's instructions of, of how third-party developers can add their own plugins. Uh, a lot of interesting plugins in there. So in summary, JBrowse 2, a ground-up rewrite of JBrowse. Um, it's all new code. Uh, we uh, can run it. It's equally at home on the web, uh, on the desktop, or embedded in other apps. Uh, and you can integrate multiple visualizations in the same uh, view. And you can write your own visualizations that integrate with the, the ones out of the box because it is even more pluggable than JBrowse 1. And that is the end of my talk. Here's the awesome team that has built all of this stuff. Uh, a number of the team members are here. Uh, and we're happy to answer any questions um, and thank you all for your time. Great. Thank you, Rob. Um, so if people have questions, you can, uh, raise your hand if you know how to do that in uh, Zoom. You can also type things in the, um, in the chat box and we will answer those. Um, I do have in the chat box, uh, I pasted a few times the, the link to the tutorial page and the link to the JBrowse desktop download page. Uh, I'll do that again because we're now up to 42 participants, which is uh, some people have been coming in uh, wow. while Rob was talking. I know it's fantastic. It makes me very happy too. Um, so if anybody has any questions, like I said, you can put them in the in the chat box. I'm going to paste in again the link to the tutorial and the download page for anybody who wants that. Um, uh, yeah. So so I I. I you know, JBrowse 2 is, is uh, in many ways, you know, a brand new beast. Um, and so I think we will, uh, you know, uh, Rob, why don't you stop sharing your screen and then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll start sharing mine and I'll, you know, we'll see if anybody, uh, I don't see any hands up, and, uh, no message in the chat box, so that's okay. Um, I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to share my whole screen so hopefully nothing embarrassing will happen whilst I'm doing that. Let me uh, get rid of this thing. I turned off my notifications before now, but I will definitely turn them on now. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> let's see. Okay. Back to, there we go. So Safari. Okay. So first of all, um, oh yeah, so somebody did ask, uh, Laura Dubois asked, uh, um, JBrowse uh, allows for two modes of track, navigation. Um, oh, I see. Yeah, there's not a faceted track selector yet for JBrowse 2. Um, yeah, exactly. But like Rob said, it's something we're definitely thinking about. Um, there should not be a login requirement for the tutorial page. Everybody should be able to see it. Um, yeah, and attendees can't unmute uh, because there's a lot of people. Um, uh, I don't know about the track metadata thing. Rob, do you know uh, if it's possible to load track metadata via a, um, a separated value? Oh, Rob can't unmute. I guess I have to ask him to. Um, looking for Rob on the list. We're too successful. Okay. Um, there we go. 
uh, answer to that is not directly uh, supporting CSV track metadata right now. Uh, you could, as things stand, you would have to write a script that uses the JBrowse CLI to create all the tracks from your CSV file. Cool. And, um, and uh, Gerard, hi, by the way, uh, it's good to, uh, uh, good to see you virtually. Um, so I, uh, I can, I, I'm currently not logged into the wiki page. Um, you shouldn't need to log in to see it. Uh, you only need to log in to edit it. But if you wanted to make edits, I could, uh, well, I can't, I can't give you the ability to do that right now, but I could do it after the tutorial. If you want to make edits, I'm perfectly willing to, to have your edits. Um, but anyway, so I think I will go ahead and try to get started. Um, it's kind of funny. I, I've been editing this page like crazy, but I forgot to edit the part where it said it's a nearly complete draft. I feel like it's pretty much done, uh, but maybe I'll, it, depending on how things go today, uh, it will be done. Um, let's see. Um, let me try one thing real quick before I really get started. Um, you know what, I, I am, uh, I am going to turn off the allow participants to unmute. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully that won't cause anything really crazy to happen. Um, and uh, but anyway, so so if people want to unmute to ask a question, you can. But um, yeah, everybody behave for the most part. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so uh, so we're like uh, Rob alluded to. We are going to be doing uh, this tutorial with the the JBrowse two desktop application. Uh, in the tutorial, there is a link to the download page. It is a very fast download. Um, so if even while I'm talking, if you have this page open, you could probably go to this page, pick the platform you, that you want to download and download it. Um, and, and you won't be very far behind. Um, so uh, let's see, do I even have, I do have JBrowse 2 open. Um, so. Ordinarily, if I were just using my computer, I would just use the uh, uh, whatever that is in Mac. I forget the, the autocomplete open thingy, uh, Spotlight Search. I use Spotlight Search to start it, but I've already got it running, so I don't have to do that. Um, so here's what it looks like when you start up uh, the JBrowse desktop. Um, if you have just installed it and started it, this stuff on the right won't be there. Um, it's the you know, the recently opened sessions, but it does automatically, you know, kind of do like an auto save and you can also explicitly save a session so that you can like give it a name and stuff like that. Like I could, I could rename this session right now if I wanted to, and if I knew what it was, I might give it some useful name. Um, and then, but what you will have anytime you open it is this thing on the left, uh, which is the ability to open sequence files, which we're gonna do in just a second, or we can open ones that are already kind of built in for human, you know, different human assemblies or, or the mouse assembly, which I think there's a new mouse assembly coming out in the very near future, or maybe it's already out. Um, so anyway, so um, I'm going to be bouncing back and forth between, you know, this, this page, this tutorial page and the JBrowse, um, the JBrowse 2 instance. So hopefully you won't get too dizzy from me doing that. But basically, so what we're going to start with, the, the, the end goal of this tutorial is to create a Synteny view that shows a Synteny between uh, grape genome and peach genome. And so to do that, basically, all of the data we need is on, um, is on the web. And uh, so, so we're just going to be copying and pasting URLs a lot. Um, but I'll talk about what those things are. So basically, what we're going to start with is we actually need the, the, the fast phase sequences, the genome sequences of each one of those. So we're going to start with, uh, this is the grape genome. I'm actually going to copy just this first URL um, because you, know, you can see here, the, the URLs are all exactly the same. It's just a little bit different um, extension on the end of them. So basically, this is a, um, a BG zipped uh, FASTA file, uh, which is a, a special kind of uh, zip, uh, gzip format. And then, uh, and then it's, um, no, it's FAI indexed. Uh, so that gives you a .fai file and a .gzi file. So basically, it's it's much more compressed than a regular uh, FASTA. So basically, what I'm going to do is go back to JBrowse 2, and I'm going to do this open sequence thing here. So that gives me this dialog box. And since the grape genome is what I copied, uh, I'm going to type in grape in the assembly. I don't have to give it a display name, 
I'll just use grape anywhere. So I'm just going to leave that blank. And then down here uh, is a list of kind of formats that uh, JBrowse 2 will accept. It will accept just vanilla FASTA, but we're not going to use that because you know we've got already compressed data that's ready to be used. So we're going to you know, since we're going to be transferring it over the internet, it makes sense to use something that's compressed. Compressed, um, and so the one that I use a lot for a lot of very different, uh, you know, a lot of applications is the BG BG Zip FastA adapter. That's the one I talked about, and we also have the option of either loading them from a local file or uh, from a URL. And interestingly, this is available whether you're using this as a desktop application or as a server application. You know, if it's out on the web, you can still you know, use local files and they don't get uploaded, they just get used locally. Um, so anyway, so I went ahead and pasted in that URL. Um, okay, and, and so, that's, so that's the URL for the BG zipped FASTA file. And then right here it says in very small print, that's probably hard to see over Zoom, but if you're running the application, you'll be able to see it. It says FAI location. So again, I'm going to select the URL and I'm going to paste the same URL in, but I'm just going to type in .fai to, I don't have to bounce back and forth between the tutorial and, and here to paste that in. And then I'm going to do the same thing because right underneath it, it's the, this, this is the GZI location and I'm going to select URL again and I'm going to paste the URL in there and type GZI. That is the, that's the, the name of the, the, the um, those, those files. So it's, there's a .gz file, a .fai file, and a .gzi file. Now, um, I'm going to hit submit, but before I hit submit, I just want to point out that there is a button here that's uh, add another assembly. Um, I could add the peach assembly here, but uh, I'm not going to for two reasons. One, I want to show you the other way to load it if that's what you want to do. And two, uh, the JBrowse 2 developers thought it would be funny to release a new uh, version of this on Friday that provided this functionality so that I wrote most of the tutorial before this button was here. Uh, so uh, in, as I guess a form of protest, I'm not going to <laughs> use this button because it wasn't here two days ago. Okay, so I'm gonna hit submit and that should change the view. Now we see this, a fairly blank page. And then there's a, a drop down menu here that has lots of options in it. Uh, we're not going to mess with any of those yet, but those are the things we're going to need. Instead, um, I'm going to bounce back the tutorial real quick. See, there's the, that's the dialog box that we have. And see, there's the picture that I used for this, and that button's not there. Um, so now I do have an edit to, do, to make um, to, uh, to add to um, this tutorial. So I'll, I'll, I'll make a new screenshot of that. Okay, so uh, again, that's one genome loader. We added grape. Now we want to add the peach genome. It's going to look very similar. Uh, and while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and grab the URL for the peach, you know, the, the gzipped, the gzipped um, peach genome. And this time we're going to use the tools menu and add assembly, you know, open the assembly manager. Okay, so I'm going to come back here up in tools. It says open assembly manager. And now I'm going to add a new assembly and we get a very similar um, a very similar dialog box. In fact, it is probably in the code underneath, it's probably exactly the same dialog box. I'm just going to type peach here because this is a peach. And under type, I added, I selected BG zip FASTA adapter. So those are the two things I have to do. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing I did before, putting in the URL for the FASTA. And then again, pasting that same URL and adding .fai for the FAI location, and then down here, paste in again exactly the same URL and add .gzi to that. And then I'm going to go ahead and click Create New Assembly. And now in the Assembly Manager, I have two assemblies, one for grape, one for peach. These do have edit things, uh, edit options. So that I, if I wanted to, I could click on one of these and there's a whole, there's you know, a, a, you know things that I can add. For instance, um, if I had cytoband information, uh, JBrowse 2 will display the cytoband information in our displays. Uh, I don't have any for these genomes, so I'm not going to do that. Um, let's see. Oh, I also have, I, I don't need it today, but uh, there's also the ability to add a reference name uh, alias file. So say, for instance, 
uh, you use the UCSC genome browser and they name all their genomes, you know, or all their chromosomes that are CHR1, CHR2, but uh, all of your FASTA files or all your GFF files have just one, two, three for the names of the chromosomes. You can actually add a reference file so that basically JBrowse knows that both of those things mean the same, the same thing. That's what the, the uh, alias adapter is for. But again, don't need that today. That's extra stuff we don't need to do. Okay, so coming back to the tutorial to uh, catch us up a little bit. Um, Oh yeah, I just wanted to mention, so we, we use these FASTA files. I just want to mention that, yeah, we use BGZIP. There's a link for it here. Um, and that comes in SAM tools. Uh, so the, the, the commands for doing this, if you have BGZIP already installed is very easy. It's just, you know, you BGZIP your file and then you use SAM tools to FAI DX, index it. Um, and that's, that's how you end up getting those three files. Okay. Now we're going to create a comparison view between these two things but before we can do that we need to get the actual data um, so basically what what we did is we ran uh, minimap 2 on it so it's basically just take the two genomes the, the FASTA sequences and uh, create a what is called a PAF which I off the top of my head I can't remember what it stands for but it's a pretty common file format for doing these sort of comparative you know for basically telling you this region on this section of sequence relates to this region on this section of sequence. And so here's a sample of what it looks like. It's basically, you know, chromosome one of peach, these coordinates relates to chromosome eight on grape and these coordinates. That's basically all it does. So we have a file basically that does exactly that. And this is the command we use. It's basically, like I said, it's just taking the two FASTA files and running minimap on them and then getting you, getting this uh, PF file out. Okay. So, now we have that PAF file. Uh, it's actually down here, right underneath this uh, screenshot of the uh, the menu I showed you uh, in real life a second ago. This URL is here that has um, the uh, that PAF file in it. So I'm going to copy that URL so that I have it, and then I'm going to go back and we're going to select a view to launch. So. Again, we've got this drop down menu. It's probably pretty small again and while you're watching in Zoom, but um, there are a few options. What we're going to select right now is the dot plot view. Uh, so we're going to see kind of, you know, Rob uh, mentioned that uh, when he was talking about, you know, the different views we have available. So I'm going to say dot plot view and I'm going to select launch view. And so it brings up this uh, dialogue, uh, which is great. It says I'm going to compare grape to grape, which is not what I'm going to do. Here is one piece that is really, really important. Um, because that PAF file has peach first, in the first column is peach, and then you know whatever the next column, you know, after peach, it says how it's related to grape. We have to put those in in the same order in this dialog box. So I need to change that first, where it says grape, I need to change that to peach. So it's saying peach versus grape. So peach first, then grape. Okay. And then down here, it says, uh, if you've got a PAF file, go ahead and enter that. I'm going to paste that in. I just copied from the tutorial. And then I'm going to click open. And it's probably going to take a few seconds. We've got a little loading dialog up here. So basically, it, it drew in the boxes, you know, the chromosome or, or genome versus genome. It's going to do the loading. Hopefully, it doesn't take too long. Uh, basically, obviously, in order to generate this view, it has to get the entire uh, that was pretty fast. It has to get the entire file, parse it, and then decide how to draw it. So to me, it feels like that was pretty quick. And so what's nice about this is that, you know, we can interact with it. So so we can see, oh, there's, you know, there's different things going on here. So there's like, you know, there's maybe a, a rearrangement here because we've got, you know, well, peach versus grape. I don't know how closely related they are, but they're obviously not super close. So we've got regions here that, you know, there's stuff going on. Uh, that's, this is interesting here. Um, I don't have a spot that I'm going to pick out. I know I did have spots that I made screenshots of, but I actually don't even remember where that is. So I'm just going to pick this region right here. And by doing kind of a click and drag corner to corner to create a box, that will let me, that'll pop in, uh, pop up this menu. And so I can uh, zoom in uh, or open a linear symphony view. First, I'll zoom in just so that I can see it a little better. There we go, zoom in. Um, 
And so I can see the dots here and there's dots here. And like, okay, that's interesting. So I'm gonna, again, grab a little piece of that. And I'm just gonna say, um, well, actually I'm gonna do this. Um, oh, I thought there was a dot, but it's not. It was gunk on my screen. Okay, <laughs> so, but I'm still gonna, I'm gonna create this box so that it actually overlaps with, overlaps with a chromosome. So this up here is a, a section of chromosome one random in, in um, grape. And that overlaps with this uh, looks like peach chromosome four. Um, but you'll notice that this thing also overlaps, overlaps with grape chromosome 19. And actually, uh, GA Browse 2 can show you more than one chromosome at a time. So I'm going to open this up so that we can just see what it looks like. So down here, this is peach, uh, peach chromosome four up here. Down here is chromosome 19. But because of the way I drew it, I also get to see a little bit of 18. There, there's 18, um, or 18 random. But anyway, so it can, it can display multiple chromosomes at a time. And so we, we can see the symphony. It's a little messy. Um, so I might want to zoom in, for instance. You know, so the way you zoom in is very similar to what you do with um, uh, other genome browsers. Is you, you, know, you can grab, I can either use, you know, like over here, there's the little, uh, magnifying glass thingies, but I'm not going to use those. Instead, I'm just going to kind of click and drag on the, the kind of number line region of the display. And so I'm going to say I want to zoom into there. So there's a lot going on there. Okay. And so it cleaned up the view quite a bit. And I'm going to then drag this part over here. And so all of this happens obviously in real time. So that's nice. Um, and I'll probably zoom in again because I'm going to say, okay, well, really what I want to see is this section of grape, again, zoom into that region, and then let's say this section of peach, and zoom in again. Okay, there we go. Terrific. And so now I can see there, there are lines that are connecting these two chromosomes. It is not super informative right now because I don't know anything that's in either of these regions. Uh, but we do at least have a display, so that's nice. So um, I'm going to bounce back to the tutorial page. Okay, good. I, I did want to check. So people are asking questions. Um, uh, let's see. So uh, it looks like it looks like uh, Ra, uh, uh, Colin has been ask, answering questions. So that's terrific uh, in the chat. So thank you, Colin. Okay. So there's the display we just saw a second ago. And Here's what I did, you know, zooming in and creating a symphony plot. So we've done all of these things, so that's good. So what we'd like to do now is maybe add some annotation tracks so that we can get some context for what is going on in, um, uh, in these symphony views. So um, first thing I'm gonna do is grab this peach um, GFF file. So basically this, this GFF file here under Peach is a, a sorted and then um, tabix in, compressed and tabix indexed uh, GFF file. Um, so let's see. So, um, so what we're going to do is go back and we're going to see how to add uh, new data tracks. Okay. So I don't let me forget that I got the Peach GFF because I want to make sure I click on the right one. So here. This, this PP04, that means that's the peach genome. It's, I can't remember what the scientific name is, but the P is definitely peach. So if I want to add a new track, I can click this button here to open the track selector. So that's great. It adds a track selector. So I could add the reference sequence track, but that won't be very interesting. So instead, I'm going to add a new track. And the way you add the new track is this little menu here that sometimes people call a hamburger menu. Um, I'm going to click on that. And right now, the only option there is to add a track. So I'm going to select add a track. And so the first thing I have to do is add uh, the URL that I just copied. That's the first thing I do. And then uh, because uh, this GFF file, this compressed GFF file has an index, it's an index GFF file, I'm going to go ahead and paste that in there. And I'm pretty sure the extension is TBI, but you know I'm going to go back and make sure that that's really what it is. Yeah, it is. It's got TBI, so I can use that. Your I can use that URL twice just by adding um, dot TBI to the end of this one. Okay, and so then I'm going to hit next. And so JBrowse two does a really good job when you're adding new data of 
kind of figuring out what it is you want to add. So it has already selected for me under this adapter type, it has already selected for me GFF3 Tabix adapter. Um, there are quite a few adapters here. So these are the different sites, excuse me, different sorts of uh, data files you can add. Okay, uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, one thing I want to do before I go from here, so, so basically this is all fine. The only thing is that um, the uh, uh, JBrowse 2 will uh, give basically the track uh, a name based on what the file was, and that's not very informative. So I'm just going to change that to Peach Jeans. Okay. And then I'm also going to just double check that it says peach down here, because if it said grape here, then I would know that I had done something wrong. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. And oh, actually, sometimes sometimes when you're doing something like this, depending on how zoomed out you are, um, it will say, uh, I'm not going to load this because it'll make the browser too slow. Um, but I'm zoomed in far enough that that didn't happen. So anyway, so that's great. Now I've got jeans. Terrific. That makes me happy. Um, and we're going to do the same thing now for grape, actually, so that we can see uh, the grape genes as well. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that URL. That's you know the same sort of data. It's indexed in compressed GFF. I'm going to open the track selector here. Again, select add track. I'm going to paste in the URL for that. Let me make sure that I actually copied that URL. Yeah. Right, and then I'm going to add .tbi to the end of this one, just like I did before for Peach a second ago. Select next. So again, I'm checking here to make sure that I've got the right assemblies. Great, that's good. It, it get, again guessed correctly that I was using GFF3 Tabix, and then I'm going to change this to Grape. Okay. So you'll notice that. Um, uh, there we go. Um, let's see. To make this a little, give me a little room to work here. I'm going to get rid of the dot plot. Okay, so this, it is a multiple view, um, you know, multiple view stack. But I only really want this one right now. Um, so there we go. So now I've got genes. I can say, okay, this gene. Um, right now I can open this up a little bit too because um, there we go. There's a lot more data down here that we haven't seen. So there we go. So that's. There's uh, terrific genes there, genes there, terrific. That's good. Okay. Uh, so there's all the, all of what that looks like. Oh, this is the view. I didn't, like I said, I was zoomed in far enough that that didn't happen. Um, but here's the, the little message it gives you if you're zoomed out really far. Okay. Um, and here's what it looks like when you zoomed in, just like we did. And so again, uh, what I was using all through this, you know, for, for loading both of those gene tracks is uh, index GFF files. If you wanted to do the same thing, it's pretty easy. You need uh, genome tools, um, which you can use to sort the GFF because it has to be sorted before it can be indexed. And then you need SAM tools, which does the BGZIP and indexing. So basically, these are the commands. You basically run genome tools and sort the GFF, and then you take that GFF file and you BGZIP it. And then you run Tabix on it, and that gives you the two files that you need. Okay. And you saw that I was navigating. Um, so things that you can do in terms of navigation. So like, like I said, you know, zooming in and out. We've already seen that. Uh, well, that was zooming in. I can zoom out, you know, using this thingy here, and it'll re-render. Um, so that's that's good. That's you know, so I can zoom way out if I want to do that. If I keep zooming out, it will probably get to the point here pretty quick. Yeah, there it is, where it says, no, I'm not going to show you this because it'll take too long, but I can still force it, and it won't take ridiculously long. It's just JBrowse is trying to help you. OK, um, but I'm going to go ahead and zoom back into where I was, like that, I think. OK, terrific. Um, and if I grab anywhere else that is not up here where, where I zoom in, if I grab anywhere else, I can drag it side to side like that. And you know the the, you know, the the pink lines that show where the symphony are, you know, drag along with it. You can do the same thing down here. Drag it around. That's that's terrific. Um, then one thing that I want to show you that uh, is also neat is right up here in the upper left hand corner is this little kind of it looks to me like a really tiny racetrack with a line through it. Basically, what that does is it gives me a little mouse over information. So toggle linked scroll behavior across views. So right now, the linked scrolling is turned off. If I 
toggle that and turn it back on or turn it on, excuse me. Now, if I grab a hold of somewhere and drag it, the, both the top and the bottom views move, move. That's nice. So it's nice that you can turn that on or off because you can either move things independently or not. Okay. Um, oh, and I'll also point out, uh, because this actually tripped me up when I was working on this, is there are also two icons here next to it. Those don't actually do anything yet. <laughs> plan development for the future of the things we're going to do with that. Um, okay, now, this, this is a, a little kind of sidetrack. Oh, oh, you know, uh, that's actually, uh, I just happened to see the, the chat because I keep toggling my views, but I see the one uh, Gerard asked about whether or not you can, uh, if you select a gene on the top, will it select the one on the bottom? And I'm pretty sure that doesn't happen yet, but I do, think that is something that will come. Um, so I don't think you can do it yet. So anyway, uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about uh, that um, is kind of, uh, it's not necessary for doing this tutorial exactly, but that is really nice is that, you know, there are a lot of uh, JBrowse one instances out there in the world that might have data that you might like to have in your view, okay? Um, and rather than you know writing to the person who owns that JBrowse instance and saying, "Hey, can I borrow your data or whatever?" and then and then you know having to process process it yourself and you know do things like that with it, uh, you can basically always uh, if you can see a JBrowse instance, you can probably get get at the data from it. So for instance, I'm going to open up um, this JBrowse instance here. It actually comes from the the genome database for rosacea. Um, uh, those people are great. I don't know if there's any in the in the room that, that is from that group, but uh, GDR is terrific. I like them a lot. They have a Peach Assembly uh, JBrowse one instance, so I'm going to open that up here. Um, and let's see. So I need to uh, zoom. Has gotten in my way. There we go. Okay. So there it is. So that's this is this is the the JBrowse one instance that I don't have any control over. But I can see that they have these SNPs here that I, you know, for whatever reason, I would like to include those in the browser that I'm building. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do this, but I'll also point out that, that if you're doing this on a web server, um, it may not work as easily because you may have to ask uh, the people who own this JBrowse one instance to basically open it up so that you can use it in their web, your web instance. But since we're doing this, doing this on the desktop, we don't have to worry about that. We can just use their data directly. So to use their data, what we can do is, um, you know, we can uh, get this menu for the SNPs. And if I open up the edit config dialog box, I get this really not very attractive JSON display. But down here at the bottom, there are two really useful things that say base URL and URL template. And basically, if I take each one of these in turn, if I take the base URL, copy that, and then take the URL template and append it to the base URL, okay? So if I take those two things, and I'm gonna come back to, nope, I'm gonna come back to the tutorial. If I take those two things, I get a URL that looks like this one. Now, I will point out that this URL doesn't point to anything real right now because of this this little uh, curly brace, ref seat curly brace. So if I click on it, I'm just gonna get a 401, uh, 404, excuse me, file not found, okay. But that's because JBrowse one does some magic, you know, you're replacing this ref seat thing with the name of a chromosome. So like I can, it'll replace it with PP04 for, for peach chromosome four. Um, and this is a real URL. So basically all I did was replace this ref seat manually with PP04, just so that I could prove to myself that I've got the right URL. So if I copy this one, okay, I can add a new track for the, this peach data. Um, and what I'm gonna do to add the peach data is I have to make sure that I have the, the track selector for peach open, uh, because I think when I left, I left the grape, peach, uh, the grape track selector open. So to do that in the little, uh, um, uh, magnifying glass thingy, there's also a little down carrot to open a new menu. So if I come over here, what I'm talking about is up here in the upper right-hand corner um, for Peach. So I'm going to say, 
there's a lot of options here for things I can do, but the thing that I want right now is open the track selector. And so that did change the track selector and look now it says peach jeans. That's how I know I've got the right one. And so I'm going to go ahead and add track. Now I'm going to paste in, I think I copied the URL I need. Yeah, it ends in track, uh, track data.json.z. So that I know comes from, yeah, that's from rosacea.org. Ros no, I'm probably mispronouncing it, Latin. Um, and then one thing I just want to point out is somewhere along the way, my little curly brace got turned into, you know, percent 7B and percent 7D. So if I use this URL, it will not work. Uh, so I'm going to change that to a opening curly brace and then a closing curly brace. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. And again, um, it figures out that uh, what I gave it was an NC list file. That, so it figured out on its own. Yep, that's that's you know JBrowse one data right there. It's using the right assembly. It's using Peach. The only thing I'm going to add here is I'm going to change this again because the file name is not very useful. I'm going to add Peach uh, snips, which I think is not as informative as what they have uh, on their genome browser, but that's okay. It's, and then I hit Add, and it automatically loads the snips. And now I've got these data that I uh, have. I guess you could say I appropriated them from um, uh, from somebody else's genome browser, but now I've got that data in mind too, in case I wanted it. So that's that's a really useful thing. So basically, that will work. Um, that will work pretty much all the time in uh, uh, for the desktop application. And if you want to do the same thing on a web uh, in a web browser, I, I didn't add this note in the tutorial. I'll try to remember to add it after I'm done. If you want to do the same thing in a, uh, a web browser, you'll have to make sure that the people who host the data have cores turned on, C-O-R-S, um, cross-origin something, something, I don't remember exactly. So anyway, um, I turn that on on all the genome browsers I make, but not everybody does. Um, okay, so there we go. So now we've got SNPs. So that's great. So now this is a very useful display, I think, um, but there are things that we might want to do that will make it look, uh, make it um, easier to use. So we're going to talk about how we can change the view of what we're seeing. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to zoom in to just individual genes so that I can get a display that looks like this, you know, with like a trapezoid or something. So let's see. So I'll pick this one right here. Zoom in. There we go. And then that corresponds to this one right here. So I'm going to go right there and zoom in again. There we go. And Terrific. Okay, so I've got a gene up here, gene down here, and I've got a little trapezoid between them. Now, what happens sometimes when you're looking at Tintini data is that you know, the, the order is flipped, you know, the, the direction is flipped, the strandedness between one genome and the next. So you might get something that looks like, um, oops, you might get something that looks like two triangles joined together like this. So that's how you know that something is flipped relative to the genome you're comparing it to. So if I wanted to, if I said, well, that's not that helpful, or I'd like to flip it so that I can see a whole block that's ordered in the same way as uh, what I'm looking at, I can pick one of these and flip it. Let me see, I think there's certainly more than one way to do it. I wanna make sure I use the way that I said. Okay, and that's using the menu in the upper left-hand corner. So I'm gonna show you that menu now. So up here, Oops, up here, there's another menu. It's kind of, again, a hamburger menu with the three lines. Um, there we go, I had it chopped off a little bit. Uh, so when I click on that, I get, you know, view one, so the top one is view one, and then view two, the top one, you know, the bottom one is view two. Um, so let's say in view two, I would like to flip, flip it so that it's oriented opposite of the way it is now. And the way I can do that is, select horizontally flip. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I select horizontally flip, and now I've got basically these two triangles instead. So basically that, that shows me that they're going opposite directions in the view. And I think that over here I can do the same thing, right? So the, the, same, the same menu is available here and here, but here I know that it applies to the, the genome that I'm actually using with. So that if I click on this one, I know that I'm getting the grape genome. So again, I can horizontally flip and flip it back the way it was. 
And there you go. Now I've got a trapezoid again instead of two triangles. Okay, so that is uh, kind of the, the, the most simple sort of um, changing of the view. The next one that people frequently ask for is changing the way labels appear for tracks on, on the display. So I'll, I'll show you here why that's important. So, you know, if I come over here, if I, I got this now, I've got this gene is sitting underneath this track label and yeah, I can slide it over, but maybe I, maybe I can't slide it over. Maybe I don't want to because I've got other stuff on the screen and down here. I can't even read the label of this one. That's you know, this gene that is next to the one that I'm looking at. Maybe I want to see that label. So there are a couple of ways to, um, to deal with that label issue. One is we can say for all of the, I'm gonna do it over here. So I like this menu better. Um, I can change the way the track labels look. So the default is overlapping. That's what we see right now, it overlaps the data. Another option is to select offset. And basically what that does is kind of gives the label its own, you know, its own space vertically. Now, you might ask, okay, this is obviously better for some people. Um, why is the default to do the other thing where it overlaps? Well, these displays can get ridiculously tall. You know, if you have a lot of tracks open, um, unless you've got a huge monitor that you've flipped on its side, which some people do have, um, you know, you, you might run out of vertical space. And so we're setting it to conserve that vertical space. Um, but this is one way to get kind of a more vertically spaced out so that you, you're not overlapping things. And that's great. Um, so that's, that's one option. Uh, another one is say I've only got one track open anyway. So down here in gene, in, in grape, excuse me, I only have a genes track. Um, so I could just turn that label off altogether. So if I come here and say track labels, I can select hidden. So that basically just turns the track labels off. So it disappeared. And because all I've got there is genes anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, it doesn't matter if I hide the labels because obviously those are the genes because there's nothing else there. Okay. Back here. Um, all right, so that's what I did. Um, oh, one thing I wanna do before I talk more about views is I do wanna mention that there's a way to make an SVG export, you know, scalable vector graphics, you know, that you would use in a publication. Um, one thing I want to point out, if I, I come back here, one thing I want to point out is that at the moment, the only thing I can make an SVG of is the 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 genome view. So like, you know, this area, I can't get an SVG of this yet, which is unfortunate. So I can make SGVs, SVGs of each of these uh, genomes separately. I can make a peach one and I can make a grape one. Um, but I can't make an SVG of this whole display yet. So I think that's something that is coming as well. Um, so if I zoom out a little bit there, now if I make an SVG of this peach section here, we'll see that I'll get you know, a couple of genes plus this SNP. And the way you do that again, again, I can access it both from this menu here and I can access it from this menu over here. Um, both of them have an export SVG option. Um, and so I can, basically it has an option to turn off rasterize on your canvas. Um, basically I always leave it on. Uh, if you've got a lot of data and you turn that off, it can make the file a lot bigger. Um, so it's up to you. It depends on what you need the SVG for. Um, so I hit submit um, and then it says, okay, do you wanna make, um, make this file? I'm gonna say uh, sample SVG. It's gonna put it in the downloads file. I hit save. Okay, and then if I look at my downloads, hopefully there's nothing embarrassing in there. Nope, that's desktop downloads. There we go. And if I click on it, this is what the SVG looks like. Okay, there we go. Um, so anyway, so those are those are useful. People like to have SVGs. Um, okay. Um, and then one last kind of simple thing I wanted to do in terms of the view is basically to change the colors. So yes, it exports what's visible. I, I just saw, uh, Jolene, I just saw your comment. Uh, it exports what's visible. Um, let's see. Well, it, hmm, it exports, huh? 
actually, I don't know. Okay, let, let me try something real quick. Um, so for instance, if I zoom out a little bit and then make this window a little smaller, oops, that's not what I wanted to make smaller, make this panel a little smaller. Basically, what I, I, I've got more genes down here than I can see. Um, so there's more data down there. And now I'm going to make an SVG of this. It, save that. Sure, replace it. I need the other one that was there. So let's see what it looks like. Ah, so it's showing me exactly what's visible. So in order to see the genes that I chopped off down here, I have to come back to, excuse me, I have to come back to JBrowse. Drag this down so that I can see all the genes that are there. And now if I make an SVG of that, um, I'm gonna make it a two here in case I wanna compare. Save that. And there, see that's the, the difference that I, here I was chopping off some stuff. Uh, so basically, it's, go it's going to make an SVG of what you can see. Um, and there, there's, there's where I expanded the view so I could see all of the genes that were visible. Okay. So that was a great question. Thank you for that. Okay. Um, move over there. Um, okay. Anyway, sorry for the, all the window switching. Okay. The last thing I want to talk about before I get to something slightly more involved is uh, just changing. I'm going to introduce the concept of changing the colors of the features. So you may have noticed that every feature track that I've opened, all the features in it are this lovely color that's kind of like a dark yellow. Blue. Um, color called goldenrod. It is not my favorite color. Uh, that is the default color though for JBrowse 2. And I think it was the default color for JBrowse 1. And before that, I think it was the default color for GBrowse. Um, so I've been living with this color for 20 years and uh, I, I don't like it. So anyway, uh, so what I'd like to do first is show you how we can change these colors. Okay. So for, uh, we'll go ahead and pick this track because it's nice and big. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this really horrible um, goldenrod color for the genes. And so the way we do that is over here in available tracks, again, I've already got the right track selector open because it says peach genes here, and that's what I want to work on. This dot, dot, dot that is next to the label, uh, clicking on that will bring up a context menu, and I'm going to go ahead and select settings. So there are a lot of settings I can mess with here. Okay, so that's that's a lot of stuff. Uh, so the, the ones I want to do though, there's no description. I should add a description. I don't have one. Um, it doesn't have a category. Again, it's reiterating the information about the adapter. So if that the location of these files changed, I can fix that here. Um, let's see. Uh, it has the thing about the text searching adapter. I'm not gonna mess with that right now. Okay, so here's what I want to do. Display one is basically this panel right here. So there are other displays that I could be seeing here that like if I opened a circular genome view, I could that would be another display, but display one is the one that I want to mess with right now. Um, and the renderer for this display one that I'm interested in is the SVG feature renderer. That's what is that is what is responsible for drawing these pictures. And so that's where that's where this it says, okay, color one, which is basically the dominant color, is, is goldenrod. Uh, and then there's a color two, which, uh, yeah, we can see it, is the connector for, you know, where the introns are, basically, it connects with coding regions or exons, excuse me. Uh, and then color three is like the accent color where it is basically that's what, that's what you use for drawing UTRs. So the goldenrod is coding region. The, U, the UTRs are in this kind of uh, green blue color. I don't even know what you call that. And then the connector lines are black. So I could change any one of these if I wanted to. Um, what did I do here? Um, oh yeah, I remember. So I could say, I could 
in the tutorial, I have this color. So it's a web color, you know, it's, um, pound FFE5B4. So that, um, if you Google uh, peach web color, I think that is what you get. So all I, I, all I have to do is basically paste that in and it changes it to peach, right? So that's, that's what the color is. And it happens immediately. All I did was hit return after pasting that in and boom, uh, it changed it. Now, is peach a good color for jeans? No, I don't think so. It's too pale. Uh, so it's a cute idea, but I'm not going to keep it because it's really hard to see. Um, so how can I change it? Well, it turns out that each one of these little color boxes on the very right of the display is actually a button that will bring up a color selector. So now I've got this color, I've got this color selector. I can pick any color I want. And it actually updates while I'm like sliding around looking for a color I like. Um, isn't that pretty? It's a nice little pale blue color. Um, I don't like that either. I like my colors generally to be pretty dark um, if I'm doing something. So I could I could pick this one as a blue. I could also type in blue if I wanted to. Um, I could make it, I could turn down the, I think that's saturation. I can never remember. Um, I don't know, I, I'm not sure what's going on there. Okay, um, anyway, so that's, that's, uh, that's kind of the easiest way to change colors. And obviously I can do that for anything. So now this, the blue and this green kind of conflict. So I could make, could make that you know, kind of a purple. Oh, I'd want to go lighter though for the UTR so they get a nice contrast between them. There you go, now I can see that. Okay, so that's, that's very nice. And it's very, it's, uh, it is surprising to me, even though I've been working with this for, with this application for a while, it is amazing to me how quickly it updates, um, you know, like on the fly, things like that. Okay, so that's great. The blue and the purple or lavender, I'm not sure what color I would call that exactly. Um, oops, on browser. Okay, so, um, so that's really nice. So, you know, you can change it to whatever color you like. Um, Oh yeah, peach puff. I forgot about that color. Thank you. <laughs> but it's still not a good color for um, it is not a good color for jeans. And I don't like peach puff much more than I like um, goldenrod. Anyway, um, so yeah. So anyway, so yeah. If you happen to have the the whole color space of WebSafe color names, you can use any one of them. Um, so anyway, it's fun. Now to get to uh, the stuff Rob was talking about, talking about changing things with Jexel, uh, which is the you know, JavaScript extension language. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about how to do that in this context. And again, this works exactly the same uh, in the web server as well. Okay, so the first example I'd like to show you is, since we've been working with the color of the glyph, is I'd like to change the color of the glyph according to which strand it's on, which is a fairly common request from users. So they, they could easily tell, you know, oh, this is all negative strand, this is all plus strand. And so that's a nice little feature to have. And so there's no kind of built-in way to do that, but we can write a little bit of code that will do exactly what we want to do. So now we're going to, again, be modifying the color one field. So the thing that we just made, that blue color, we can make it, uh, we can instead add a little bit of um, Jexel code. And basically what it, uh, this is, it's very straightforward. What it's doing here is, um, it's basically saying, okay, get me the feature value, you know, for, for, the, for each feature, get me the value of the strand, which in GFF is either negative one, one, or I think a dot for, you know, I don't know. Um, and so basically it's saying, okay, get me the feature. And if it's, if it's positive, if it's one, then make the thing blue and otherwise make it red. That's what this question mark is. I have to answer a question. Is it blue? Is, is it plus or is it minus? Um, if it's plus, do the first thing. If it's minus, do the, the second thing. Okay, so I'm going to copy that. Um, I don't know if that worked. I'm going to copy it again. Okay. And then I'm going to come back to JBrowse 2. And here, in the color, I can paste that. I'm not gonna do it just yet though, because I just wanna point out one thing. Uh, I don't think I made a screenshot of this. So if, when, I, when I edit the tutorial, yeah, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna want a screenshot of this as well, is one thing that is, you know, depending on how good your vision is, you might not see that there's a little circle inside this little purple rectangle here. Um, and this circle basically is a, a checkbox to say, I want this now to be 
supplied, you know, the value would be so supplied by a Jexel callback. So that's why it says convert to callback when I mouse over it. I'm going to check that off right now. Um, and so basically when I check it off, it immediately changes the contents from what it was before to basically a quoted thing of what it was before. So that it says, okay, just give me, so basically it's keeping it the same as what it was, but I don't want this contents right here. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get rid of that. Okay. Uh, and me, it momentarily gives me an error because you know it can't be empty. Uh, and I'm just gonna paste in the little, uh, the little piece of code I copied. And now I've got different colors, according to, the, to what strand it's on. And we can, so I picked strand because it's easy and there's not a lot of information in each one of these, uh, each, each one of these features. So for instance, to, to show you what I mean in terms of there not being a lot of information, I'll click on it and I can see, I can basically get a length um, uh, and, and that is really pretty much it. I mean, we, get, we have an identifier there's not much there that I can use to kind of write fun code on. Um, so, so basically we've got, uh, but I picked strand because it's easy, but if these features had scores, we could change it. You know, you could write a little Jexel function that would make it kind of varying shades of blue, depending on what the score was. For instance, I've done that in a lot of web browsers in JBrowse 1. I haven't done it in JBrowse 2 yet, but I did that a lot in JBrowse 1. So there's a lot of things you can do. Basically any sort of data that is available in the GFF, you could say, give me you know, this piece of data and then do something based on what it looks like. You could change the height, for instance, of the, the glyph. I've done that in JBrowse 1 as too. And, and, I mean, in JBrowse 1 as well. Um, so there's, uh, th there are a lot of things you can do. Uh, I just picked strand because it was easy and available. Okay, so that's, that's pretty cool. And again, I could put, um, let me close this thing so I can get that, so I can get this back. So, a little bit of Jexel, I think. Here it is. So, uh, you know, it, so I use blue and red because those are easy and short, but obviously it could be anything. I could put in a, a hex, you know, uh, the hex colors there, um, or I could write a more complicated fun function that would calculate different hex colors, like I alluded to before. But anyway, that is pretty neat. Okay. Bounce back. Um, <laughs> um, is it possible to change the color uh, of the background canvas? I don't think so. Um, oh, no, themes. I think theming is available already. Uh, one of the developers can answer that. I don't know off the top of my head if theming is available yet. I know it's something we've talked about, but I don't know if it's available there yet. Okay. Um, okay, so that's pretty neat. Another thing we can do is uh, that is another example of, uh, that we can do is changing the the text like for a label or or that sort of thing. So you you notice that by default when I mouse over these things, it gives me a little pop up that is really tiny. Um, and it's very difficult for me to see. It's basically the name of the feature that is in that little gray pop-up uh, label. So what I'd like to do is do an example of how to change that pop-up to maybe make it something useful. Um, oh, I don't think this is gonna work. All right, we'll go ahead and try it. But I think um, I made a change to this tutorial and I don't think it's gonna work the way I wrote it because I changed something. Okay, let's see what happens. All right, so basically what I'd like to say is for each one of these each one of these features, it actually has, so let me click on another one. So here's one. Um, so for each one of the transcripts in this feature, there is an attribute called longest. So it's basically, there's four transcripts here. One of these has longest equal to zero and the rest of, I mean, one of these has longest equal to one and the rest of them have longest equal to zero. So you know which transcript is the longest. Um, when I wrote this before, it was using a different glyph. Right now it's using the glyph that groups them all together. And I am nearly certain it's not going to work, but that's okay. I can live with that. So basically what I'd like to do is instead of just using the feature name, which is the way it works right now. In fact, I can show you, um, let me get rid of this. Um, and we 
again, it's in the display. I just scroll down to it. Um, the color, the descriptions, labels, no. Um, Oh, did it even have, this is what I get for changing tutorials, like literally, you know, less than 24 hours before we actually did it. Um, sorry for the dead air. I'm looking for, looking for the mouse over. And I'm sure Colin and the other developers are like, it's it's somewhere different. Why are you looking in the wrong place? Um, so the label is the thing that shows up here, not the not the mouse over, but the thing that shows up underneath it. Um, the description isn't available because there's no description data. That's fine. Where is where is the thing that's the mouse over? Oh, here it is. What to display in a given mouse over? Okay, so it's already a callback. It's basically it's get the feature the name of the feature, and so that's when I mouse over it. That gives me the name of the feature, which is exactly what's already under here. So it's not that useful. Um, so I could change it to nothing, I suppose. Let's see if I did that. Oops. Um, yeah. Now there's no mouse over. Okay, so that's nice because you know maybe it's not that interesting. You know, it's not providing any extra information. But what I'd like to do is try give, doing this. But again, it's, I'm telling you, it's not going to work. Um, um, okay. Um, let's see. So if I get the feature, so basically what I do is, in addition to the feature name, which was already what was there. I'm going to add to it, which in JavaScript add, you know, the plus sign is actually concatenation. So it will push them together, I'm not doing any math. Um, I want to get the, the value of, you know, whether or not a given transcript has the longest set to one or set to zero. So I'm basically just doing math and saying, again, is it positive or is it zero? And if it is positive, I want to change the label to add to it space longest transcript. Otherwise, I just want there to be nothing there. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and copy this and I'm going to paste it into that field that I just made empty, but just like that. Um, and if it, if it had a syntax error, it would turn pink. So the fact that it didn't turn pink is good. So if I, yeah, so if I do that, see, it, that tells me, oh, you, you made a mistake in the writing of code, but there we go. Um, so I didn't make a mistake writing the code, but I'm willing to bet yeah, see, it doesn't work because when I did this before, the individual transcripts were drawing, you know, they were drawing individually. Now they're drawing kind of as, as a group. Um, I would have to change this display to do that. And if any of the developers are listening, and, oh, for instance, there's probably a way to change what glyph I'm using. Um, I wonder. Uh, because I'll tell you, when I did this before, I did it actually using. Um, the MC list data instead of the index GFF data, but at a developer whose name will not be mentioned suggested that instead I use index GFF and uh, that broke this very last step in the tutorial because what fun would the tutorial be if it wasn't. Um, yeah, Rob is saying Rob is saying it's hard. Yeah, I think I think if I were to change the track back to using MC list, this would work and it won't work now. Um, so, sorry, you'll have to take my word for it that uh, that this little callback worked uh, before. Um, let's see, what time is it? It is tw 10 to 3. I, I forget how long I'm supposed to go. I know that I have time. And so, if you guys wanted to sit and watch me work through getting it back to the way it was before, I, I can show you. Um, but uh, I'm not going to do that just yet. Uh, so basically, I just want to mention, it basically, this, like I said, this literally was the last step in this tutorial. Uh, it's the first time I've given this one. Um, I will, hopefully, if it's still recording and I have something useful after this is over, I'm going to 
hopefully edit it into something that is uh, watchable, maybe put it on YouTube. Um, and uh, so that's terrific. And thank you everybody for hanging out and asking really good questions. I just do, I do wanna mention that if, again, this is very similar to how doing, you can do exactly the same things when you use a JBrowse server on the web. Um, and installing uh, JBrowse 2 is super, super easy. Um, you know, if you ever installed GBrowse, there's a fair amount of effort to get involved, a lot of, lot of prerequisites. Um, if you have ever installed JBrowse, there were fewer prerequisites to install JBrowse than there were to install GBrowse. Um, now JBrowse 2, uh, the, literally the only thing you need is a web server. And actually, if you wanted to run it in the dev version, you don't even dev version, you don't even need a web server. And then um, basically Node.js, um, a, a re anything reasonably recent version of Node.js. Um, I think 10 is still pretty old, relatively speaking. Um, and that's, that is literally all you need. And then you might want to get some supplementary tools for, you know, like, you know, like genome tools and SAM tools, the things that I mentioned for, you know, manipulating the data before you put it into JBrowse. But for actually running JBrowse, you don't need much of anything. Um, also new with JBrowse 2 that we didn't really talk much about is it has an admin server that you can turn on that you can use like while you're setting up your JBrowse server instance. And the URI, the, the UI for that, the user interface for that admin server is literally exactly the same as you know, the, 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 the UI you know, that, that has the, you know, all of this stuff, you know, the, the feature track settings, it has exactly the same user interface. You know, so you can add reference sequences exactly the same way or nearly exactly you know, to figure it out. Um, and you can add tracks in exactly the same way and you can modify the content of the tracks exactly the same way. So it's actually, it's, uh, it's really, uh, really nice for doing that sort of thing. Um, let's see. Oh yeah. And then I we got a question from Laura, which is a really good one that, you know, in JBrowse one, you were able to, I, I could write a URL that would precisely take me to an exact view in JBrowse one. And I could do things in that URL, like, you know, basically anything, you know, I could turn off track labels. I could uh, turn off the overview uh, in the URL, I, all of those things. Um, yeah, there's really not a way to do that in JBrowse 2 uh, because basically the problem is, is that the sessions are so much more complex that it's really kind of uh, essentially impossible to encapsulate all of that information. Um, I think, I think the developers are working on something yeah, that's going to come soon that will basically reproduce that functionality in a way that um, that will find useful. That's actually one of the things that I'm waiting for. Uh, I'm, I'm a developer for Worm based on the Alliance of Genome Resources, and um, I'm, I'm actually kind of waiting for the same thing until I implement it for for those applications, you know, for those websites. So, so like Colin said, hopefully that's coming soon. But right now, yeah, you can't do it. Um, okay. Oh, look at that. So there's art, there is, there is development going along, along the way. It's not, it's not in production yet, but there are things, there are things that at least get you close to some sort of functionality. So that's good. Thank you, Colin, for pointing that out. Okay. Um, let's see. And another question from Laura, uh, is there a way to do in session translation? Oh, um, I don't think so. Uh, I don't know. Let me look at. Okay, let's let's look at something. So, so if I click on this, it gives me uh, it gives me the sequence, and that's okay. So that's the sequence of the mRNA. Um, if I look at the sub features down here, let's see. There's pieces of CBS. What would be really great, doesn't exist yet, I don't think, but what would be really great is if there were, a, you probably could do this with a plugin pretty easily that would take these pieces of CBS, plug them together, you know, glue them together, and then do a translation. And so I don't isn't, think that exists there, yet. Uh, look, look, wait, stop, Scott, scroll down. Yeah, Rob, 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 what? Scroll down a little bit. Okay. Oh, scroll down. No, just. Yeah, see, you see CDS. Oh, now go to the top of the CDS sequence there. Oh my God. Yeah. 
brilliant. I've never done that before. So that's good. That's fantastic. I was thinking somebody was going to try to plug in, but you guys already thought of it. That's terrific. Well, Colin. Thank you, Rob. Well, good job, Colin. Then. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. And then you can copy it. So you can copy it as HTML so you can get the nice pink highlighting too if you really wanted to. Cool. Um, oh, and so CDS was the default thing. I didn't even notice that. I think that's what was turned on when I looked at it, right? Yeah. That's pretty cool because I could switch it to cDNA. Ah, it shows me the, all the uh, oh, that shows me the UTR. So that's the light, uh, I don't know what color that is. Cyan, I don't know. Um, is UTR. Um, if I do the gene with intron, oh my gosh, you guys, I uh, this is exciting. I haven't seen this yet. <laughs> so because now I guess it because this is another thing that I frequently have gotten requests for from users is you know show me a way to get something with stuff upstream and downstream. So here it is. Here's the whole gene. I've got upstream of the start of the transcript. Then here's the UTR. Then here's the first. Um, uh, first section of the CDS and then no highlighting is UTR. Oh my gosh, you guys. That's terrific. Okay, great. That's pretty neat. Thank you, Rob. I'm glad you were here to, to point that out. <laughs> Laura, seriously, don't, don't apologize. Um, it is, uh, it, it's, I'm glad you asked actually, because now I know. That's great. I'll keep, okay. keep asking questions um, or we like it a lot. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, we don't apologize. We are starved for interaction like, with users. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, I'm going to have to rework this, tutor this tutorial to make this last, very last section work. I'll have to think about it a little bit. Um, Maybe I'll, maybe I'll add a section where I add a different sort of gene track, but I don't, I don't really want to, I don't really want to subject anybody to watching me do that because I'll make mistakes while I'm doing that and that's painful. Uh, but trust me when I say this functionality used to exist, used to exist uh, when I originally wrote this tutorial and it's just because I changed the type of data that I was using that broke it. So I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to fix this so that I can get it back because I, I like it. Um, because I, because I do want, you know, this tutorial is uh, one of the things I really like about it is introducing functionality like this, where you can actually do useful things that will, help, you know, either for you or for your users, you know, to show them cool functionality. Okay. Um, oh yeah. So, so migrating JBrowse 1 to JBrowse 2. Um, yeah, I have worked a little bit on that. Uh, basically, so, so I'll tell you, basically what I've done, is, so, so at Wormbase, I'm a developer for Wormbase, and our JBrowse instance has uh, literally thousands of tracks. Um, most of them are NC list, which is, you know, like I said, kind of the default uh, format for uh, JBrowse 1, you know, discrete annotation data, you know, like for genes or SNPs or whatever, you know, something that you draw a rectangle for, as opposed to things like, you know, big wigs that you use to draw. Plot. Um, I have been working on a script, although I haven't touched it in a few months because I've been distracted by doing other things, uh, that basically would take a JBrowse 1 configuration file and extract kind of the, the bare bones of what you would need to convert it into a JBrowse 2 configuration file. Um, and so that's, uh, that's something I've been working on. Oh, yeah, maybe there, let's see, if I had uh, I wish I'd have thought of that, Rob, uh, because you can, in JBrowse 2, in JBrowse 2, you have the ability to um, open a connection. Yeah, and so so the sort of connection you can you can add, you can open a UCSC track hub. Uh, I wish I'd have thought of that because I would have added this to this tutorial. Why don't we try opening the, the GDR JBrowse and see if it works? Let's do some live de uh, live demo experimentation. Yeah, no kidding. Um, I don't. I, where do I find the URL for it? Do you have it? Are you going to post it in the chat? That would be awesome. It's just going to be like chat. the base URL of one of those. Uh, you, you had the the NC list URL. I bet if you just 
chop a couple of path elements off of it. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah, let's see. Let me scroll back up. And open the G. Oh, GDR. That's what you said. Yeah, GDR. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna grab this URL, and let's see. I bet if I take just that part. And now, if I, do I make a track list like that? Uh, oh, but this is it. I'm, I have to go back. Hold yeah, on. you need to do JBrowse one data. There you go. JBrowse one. Okay. Yeah, and this then, is the data directory. And then. Not the track list that Jason, I think it's just the data directory. Really? It, I think it's that. Say that again. Yeah. Try that. Just this. Yeah. And then uh, uh, there was a problem. Oh, the problem is that I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, let me try again. Assembly name. The browse one next. Assembly name. Oh. Okay, let me put this here first. I'll use this as an assembly. I don't think that works. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. Rob, what am I doing wrong? Uh, I think Garrett programmed this. <laughs> Garrett, what's he doing wrong? Oops. I'm trying to figure it out. Give me a sec. Type Peach in there. Make sure you hit the plus button before you go on. Yep. There. Uh, now try. Uh, okay. Now, well, now I got to go back and get the URL. There you go. There you go. Why isn't it working? It's a different error this time, though. This is one of the less used corners of the code base. Yeah. Yeah, so basically, let me tell you what, what we wanted to happen. <laughs> and then we'll figure out why it's not happening uh, at some point. Uh, basically, what you can do is, let me, you know what, let me, let me get out of here and return to the start screen. And can I open, can I open a connection from here? Or do I have to have, or do I have to, I have to start with? No, you have to start with some genomes. Hmm. <laughs> If I knew the URL for the Alliance of Genome Resources, J Browser instance, if I can just type it in, I would, you know, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to try human 38. Here, genome view. Go. So there's, there's all of human. Nice. Um, now I'm going to go to. Uh, pick a nice human gene. So Okay, tell me if work. Any connection? Abrams one data. Okay. 
That okay, assembly so name Newton has to, to, That assembly huh? name has to match. That assembly name that oh, you put assembly in has, name to, has to match. Oh, that's why it failed before then. That's why. It oh. Failed okay, so it has to be like H HG thirty eight. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, in the JBrowse URL, I have this. This is a part a get URL that says question mark data equals data. You know, Homo sapiens. Um, does it have to be a real URL or can it be a get URL like this? It needs to be a real URL. So just like change it to slash data slash homo sapiens. Yeah. Oh man, look at the tracks. Check it. Hey, yeah. Okay, so there we go. If anybody is still with us. <laughs> so um the default, if I'd have opened, if I'd, I should have opened this available tracks first, because you would have seen, these are the options that came with JBrowse, this JBrowse 2 application. These are the tracks that would have been available before I did anything. But when I did that whole open connection and gave it a URL, it then made these tracks available as well. So these are coming from the Alliance of Genome Resources. Um, it is, Oh, and there's real data there. That's so exciting. Okay. Pick somewhere random to zoom in on. Yeah, this is actually opening a JBrowse 1 inside JBrowse 2. Right. So this is basically, um, I wonder why that doesn't feel like that failed, but that's Might probably be a reference a, name thing. Fault. Yeah, it probably is. It almost certainly is actually. So anyway, um, but yeah, this data right here is actually coming from this all genes track. This is actually coming from the Alliance of Genome Resources, JBrowse 1 instance, just by me telling JBrowse 2, hey, there's a whole set of data over there, get whatever tracks are available and show them to me. So actually it's kind of funny because this track here, the all genes track, that is coming from the Alliance of Genome Resources. This track here, this conservation track, which I think is con conservation with primates, um, is actually coming from UCSC. So data is coming from all over the place, which is another thing that I really like about JBrowse is JBrowse doesn't care where the data is. You know, it'll, it'll show you the data regardless of where it's coming from. So here, I'm pretty sure this is, I may have copied it, but it certainly could be coming directly from UCSC. Um, I don't know what that error is. But that's, um, add, add the peach assembly, and then let's see if we can connect the, uh, the GDR JBrowse one. Okay, let's try this. Okay, let me um, I'll return to the start screen. Oh, yeah, you can just go to your other session, yeah. And then open the session that I had. Woohoo! That works. It's always nice when stuff works. Um, now I'm going to add, open a connection. Yes. Okay, browse to. Um, and so, yeah, so the thing, the thing, the trick that I didn't do before is this has to say exactly peach because that's the name of the assembly that we've been using. Now, if I come back to JBrowse, uh, to the tutorial, and I get this section of the URL that points at GDR's JBrowse instance and say connect. No error. Oh man, that there is it is. Super exciting. There's the GDR these, JBrowse 1. All of these that. tracks, all of these tracks, I, I need to fix this name of connection. Uh, I should have fixed that when I was actually creating it, but that's okay. I could have put GDR here instead. Um, but yeah, so all of these tracks are coming directly from, uh, from GDR's JBrowse 1. Um, so yeah, that's, that's actually really cool. So I could, I could go in there and again, I could, I can make changes to it just like I made changes to the, um, the you know the data that I created into individual track four. I can do exactly the same thing here. This is, uh, this is actually really useful. I, I um, I'm going to have to I, I will rework this tutorial and add a whole section about doing this because this is a really useful thing that I I wish I'd have thought of adding instead of making people um, <laughs> making people watch us figure it out in real time. But that's that's fun. Okay, of course we're, we're talking to nobody. So give us a turn. Oh no, there's still people. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
there's 30 people still. Yeah, there is. Um, let's see, yeah, Sunday afternoon, depending on where you are, Sunday evening. Um, okay, let's see. Oh my gosh, there's so many questions that I kind of uh, we have to scroll back and read through. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Um, okay. Ah, that was fun. So, you know, it's not, I, I, I felt like that's traveling too smoothly. So thank you for, for making me think of it on my fly on, on the fly. Yeah. Um, fun. Um, let's see. So any other questions? I think, I think this is supposed, I think we're supposed to be done. I want to say 30 ish. That is not the window. There we go. Oh, 340. So we actually have a ton of time, but I am perfectly willing to end early too. Um, but it doesn't matter. Whatever, uh, you know, whatever people want. So, but if you have any questions, so basically, well, I, I'm going to hang out here for a little while. And uh, I think uh, I, I'm sure Rob will too, and, and the other JBrowse 2 developers. So if you've got other questions, you know. Let, 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 us, let, us, let us hear them. And if not, uh, I do want to thank everybody for hanging out with us. I, I would like to hear, you know, if, if you actually did it, if, if, here's what I want to know. For anybody who's still here, enter in the chat and tell me if you actually did it interactively while I was doing it, or if you were just watching me, uh, watching me do it. Was anybody, was anybody actually doing it while I, while I was doing it? Yes. Okay. I just know it. <laughs> So that's good. That's success. At least one person did it. So that's good. Oh, yay. <laughs> all right. Great. Thank you. Thank you all. I, I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm really glad that that helped that helped people out. So uh, things that I could point out. Um, JBrowse, I, I should have put a link to this in the either uh, We have a, um, a Gitter channel that we pay attention to. Um, hopefully nobody posts, I mean, it's public, so people shouldn't be posting embarrassing things right now. Um, but we do have a Gitter channel that we all pay attention to is uh, gmod slash jbrowse2. Um, just Gitter channels for jbrowse Apollo as well that we pay attention to. Um, so if you have questions about um, jbrowse after, after this tutorial is over, that is a great place to get help. Um, there is also a mailing list that is, you know, SourceForge based. It is very old, but we still pay attention to that. Um, uh, so you can find the link to that easily just by Googling the mailing list. Um, and of course, Twitter, I pay attention to Twitter. So if you have questions about JBrowse, you can also put them in Twitter and I'll pay, I'll, I'll see that as well. Um, all right. I have a totally random so. question. Hi, Jennifer. What's your Hi. question? Hi. So the track selector has always been on the left. Why did you put it on the right? <laughs> Not you, but why did the developers put it on the right? To mess with you? <laughs> no, I don't know. To be, to be different, I'm guessing. Is that, I'm just curious. I'm just curious. I do think there is now actually a um, an option actually to move it to the left. Um, but yeah, I have no, I have no idea. I don't know. Does anybody remember in the depths of history why that why we changed that? No, silence. It seemed like a good idea because... at the time. I don't really remember. <laughs> right. I mean, it does yeah, distinguish the two. It's just I looked right. at it and went, well, that's, that's it's actually... on the wrong side." Yeah, I know. It's, it's funny yeah. because I was thinking the same thing. It's like, oh, so you can tell the difference. Although they look so different, I don't think anybody's really going to um, confuse one for the other. But uh, but yeah, I thought it was I I kind of thought it's funny too. But but I think there is a configuration option that you can move it back to the left if you want. <laughs> for those of us who are stuck in our ways. Yeah, exactly. Oh, believe me, uh, users. I know all about users who don't want to change. I mean, I've got I've got users who still send emails about GBrowse. Because because they've got users who don't want to change, and at Wordbase I've got people who still use GBrowse. I still support it. Anyway, all right. Thank you.
Uh, you're welcome. Thank you for asking. Uh, Julie asked if there are more tutorials. There are, I, I don't think so. This is, uh, I, this is really kind of the first one I wrote. Uh, I do actually plan on in the near future writing one that is more, so this one is very geared towards Symphony. I think I'm going to write one that is much closer, to, that is going to focus more on doing uh, breakpoint views, you know, uh, structural variation. Are there full, there are, oh, you know what, I, um, Rob is right. There, there are some tutorials on uh, jbrowse.org. Um, I'm thinking about what I have to do. The, the next thing I have to do is I want to write one that basically uses um, uh, the, the embedded view that, that uh, Rob talked about that you can you know, you embed it in Jupyter so that you could do like it, make a Jupyter workbook and, and do some Python and you know, use an embedded view. You know, so I, I plan on doing something like that. So, yeah, and, and the user guide is pretty well, I, I haven't been very involved in writing that, but uh, there's a lot of information in the user guide and there's a lot of examples. And things. So uh, those don't constitute full, full tutorials, but if you're you know, looking for how to do X, you frequently find it uh, in documentation. So that's, that exists. Okay. Um, thank you, Colin. Yeah, so basically not a lot of tutorials, you know, like, like this, but there's a lot of documentation for how to do things, basically. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to I'm going to mute and take a big drink of water. <laughs> but I'm still here. So if you have more questions, please the chat. We could do like a live demo of some plugins or something. There are lots of interesting things in the plugin store. I forgot to unmute after drinking the water. If you want to take over the screen and show us something, Rob, you can do that. Oh, not me. I would volunteer one of the dev team to demo a plugin that they made. <laughs> so, yeah. Anybody? Colin, got anything cool? Anybody interested in multiple, multiple sequence alignment views? Colin has a pretty cool MSA viewer plugin. That sounds interesting. It does, I agree. I'm not qualified to demo it though. <laughs> Looks like Colin dropped off. Oh, we lost him. Shoot. I think he's got some YouTube videos. Yeah, here we go. Are you going to show us the YouTube video? That you um, is that? Yeah, I'll just paste the YouTube link. All right. Yeah, you can have multiple sequence alignments in JBrowse too, also. If you 
install that plugin. And there's like Mediogram plugin has an ideogram view. Several data plugins. Oh yeah, I remember this. This is uh, well, if this is this is really a thing that Ian wrote. Uh, that that turned into Ian's a plugin. I think not... he's got a demonstration of it being a plugin, though. Oh, okay. Browse one, no, no, not that. Okay, can you hear the audio? I cannot, I can't hear it either. Well, there's an example of how a plugin can add a view. Oh, yeah, see, there's there's Ian Zabrow's thing running inside a Zabrow's plugin. I forgot that it had uh, like a, a tree on the side of it. I forgot that was kind of mm -hmm. built in. Cool. Oh yeah, it's got a 3D viewer too. Oh my gosh. I'm sure there's audio that we could have heard somebody talking about it. And so this is so this is the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Like it is. Nito. This, this video was recorded about a year ago. It's quite a bit more developed now. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we've uh, I think we've uh, wound down wound down enough. Why don't we call it call it an afternoon? I actually have to go get, I'm giving a talk in about an hour and a half, another one. So I have to go make sure that that's ready to go. Uh, I've got a couple of edits that I want to do. So anyway, again, thanks everybody. Thanks to Rob and the other J2 developers for hanging out this afternoon and helping me, uh, helping me get this done. And thanks everybody for, for hanging out um, during this, this uh, workshop and sticking in there. I really appreciate it. And again, you know, let us know if you have questions, comments, suggestions. It's great. Okay.